Hello, we are back here in the studio with Wolfgang Bauer and Steve Hello. Winter. Hello. Hello. Hey, good to be here. Welcome to Sunny Renton. Uh, <laughs> I miss the Where sunny. The sun yeah. shine. Well, let's just call it Renton then. Yes. It's Greg's yes. personality. That's, yes. that's the it. sunny that's, part. Yeah. And his shirt. Uh, He's a we cheerful are, fellow. We are bright uh, and here. So, uh, Wolfgang, welcome back. Hey, it's good to be back. I think this is your fifth time. It is. Where's my jacket? I got it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Five timers club, five timers oh club jacket. God, that really yeah, is a five timers club jacket. I know. You guys, oh that is awesome. God, I Pelham, was kidding, and you were serious. Pelham went and darned it uh, in the break. Pelham, oh. well done. <laughs> well darned. Got Touched. his loom out. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he got the spinnerets of his spider that he's there been milking for weeks. Ooh, he spider can't silk, do. man, that is even cooler. <laughs> yep. Uh, Thank you. Fresh no from problem. The it's, uh, it's always great to talk oh, to you. It's a pleasure to be here every we, single time. We saw you at Gary Con. That was very nice. Yeah. To, be able to be like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah, I know those people. Yeah. yeah. That was a good Working show. Working hard. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. There was a lot of work. Uh, it was a busy show. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. Something about, you know, the town where it all started and mm-hmm. Gary's family and uh, just such a great event. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And fun. then welcome, Steve. Thank uh, you. You're in the first timers club. <laughs> uh, yeah, you get I guess. If, I, if I've you been here before, I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Nice, but uh, but uh, yeah. So uh, you are both here because you worked on uh, uh, the Ghost of Salt Marsh oh product. God, you ambushed me with this. It's right here yeah, in the studio. This is, they haven't seen it until yeah. the this last time moment. we saw it. I got, it. The, I got yeah. the snazzy cover. Steve one. The snazzy cover. Not the fancy one. It's shiny. It looks amazing. It's smudge proof. Or scuff proof. Scuff proof. How much of this can we show to the cameras? Uh, you can spoil anything because you really. Well, I mean, really. Yeah, yeah why not? All right. Well, I know Shelly got real nervous when she showed it, but why not? The title page, I think, has already been spoiled oh. online. It's the cutest thing ever, it right? It's the yeah. cutest thing. Oh my God! Straight out of the Seattle Aquarium. Is that <laughs> <laughs> a lot of research trips down to I the Seattle cute. Aquarium just to hang out with them? Mm-hmm. All Please the tell otters. me these aren't. They're not bad guys, are they? Yeah, they'll eat your face. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, Rabbit otter? No. Also, yes. otters will just eat your face, too. But, but they look cute so doing it, and that's all yes. that matters. <laughs> well, that's I mean, it's just, it, it's a real book a, now, and ghosts. that's... And it's crazy. I know. I wish we had captured the moment when we handed those to you for the first time. If I did. Because that was pretty amazing. I wasn't expecting it. I'm like, eh, I'm probably still in a warehouse on a truck. Who knows where it is? Yeah. And here it is. These were handed to me about an hour before we went online here. So it's new for us, too. I know. Yeah. We just got them. Conjured. I don't even know if this has already been spoiled, but man, this this chapter one opening art. Oh, good artwork. This awesome art. Yeah. And I think that has been spoiled because people were like, uh, I love that that party makeup and how it was just. Yes. It feels it feels real. Art order I that. wrote that art order. Thank you very much <laughs> wow. for mentioning it. Good art order. Well, it yeah. was an even. M- it was a better art order, but way complicated. The first time I wrote it, mm. I said, "Dear art director, I would like these heroes to appear in scenes throughout the book." The same characters done in the same style over and over again, so we know it's the same party of adventurers. And they said, "That's a neat idea, but you realize we're working with like twelve different artists." Oh yeah. And they said, "So it." That is a neat idea, though. Yeah, but it's not really practical. Mm. So they said, "But we're going to do it at the front of the book," and it turned out really well. It feels to me like that. I don't know, Steve. You can tell me if I'm totally wrong, but that that you know, into the unknown early. It feels first level to me, is what I'm saying here. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good it point. It does, of course. If you've ever run that scene in D and D, you know that they're going to murder this town guard <laughs> <laughs> in, in about thirty. No, seconds. they're all lawful good characters. Yeah. They would never do anything like that. No murder hoboing around here. And that donkey yeah. is really the yeah. druid. I yes, was ask that's right. About the the druid has wild shaped. <laughs> they they make him carry spoiler. all the gear. Because it's an awakened donkey. You can wild shape into yeah. a donkey. Um, so uh, while it would be great radio to have you guys just walk through each and page. And we would be willing to. <laughs> <laughs> and comment on it. Uh, you know, uh, folks uh, know Wolfgang. You've definitely been here a few times. Oh, yeah. What's, what, 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 what is your uh, involvement in, in getting Ghosts of Salt Marsh happen? And then we'll move on to, to Steve. And, and well, um, I, my involvement started with Mike Merle saying, so you Cobalt Press people have <laughs> written a few adventures. And I said, yeah. He said, how interested are you in, say, the U series? And I said, sign me up. Um, done and done. Done and done. That's how Merle does business. Yep. Right. He's like, oh, you got me in my weak spot. On a scale uh, of <laughs> one to ten. I'm <laughs> in interested. for 12. Yes. And, and I said, well, I, I, 
you know, we want to bring it to fifth edition. We're going to need a couple of people. Um, I wrote, like, chapter one about the town. I did, drew some of the maps. I did some art orders. I did a bunch of development on this. Um, but mostly I worked with Steve and with John Sawatsky, who is not here with us today. But um, with us in spirit and in, in, spirit. in his, uh, his work in the book. Uh, yeah, he did a lot of the U-series work, he and I. So, uh, But he uh, he's amazing. He did a series for Cobalt Press called Prepared. And so when I thought of who would be prepared to ah. convert this, <laughs> he Ooh. has personal branding like you would not That's believe. That's a good branding moment. That really That's why is. I call myself, you know, Greg, totally unprepared Tito. I should probably <laughs> change that Nobody asks you to do yeah. anything. Off the cuff Tito. Kind of a good doesn't doesn't I know, right? Get you in the door the way you <laughs> want it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I improvise through life. Wait a second. That's a cheerful way to be. Uh, so, uh, so Steve, what uh, I mean, you know, obviously, we want to talk about your your work on, on this product, but um, you know, you you've got a long history with with Dungeons and Dragons and role playing games. Uh, well, yeah, actually, uh, one of the very first things I ever worked on at TSR was. Secrets of Salt Marsh. What? Oh, <laughs> yeah. no so, you're the perfect person yeah, for this. Yeah, yeah. Although uh, I thought. <laughs> I, you'll notice my name was actually removed from the credits from the original uh, adventure because I had a big fight with Don Turnbull. Oh no! <laughs> what? Wow. Over, uh, certain issues. This is going to be the best interview issues. ever. So yeah, what, now let's talk fight. about it. Let's what happened? About fight. Well, <laughs> it was. All it amounted to, fight, fight. yeah, no, you're like <laughs> this is this is the uh, um, Brits versus Americans, yeah, yeah, right, the housewives type content yeah, that yeah, Shelley's yeah. been waiting the for. Table. Yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how far into the weeds of it you want to go, but let's do it. When did yeah, he hit yeah, you with a mug? Yeah, we don't have John Turnbull because, on, so you I mean, can say whatever was, you want. The adventure was written in England, right, by yes. the by the British office. Oh and, goodness, was it ever! And then they gave it to painfully me painfully British. They put a bunch of U's in there. Well, exactly. That's why it's called the U series. Exactly. Yes. So I, when I was going through it, I was Color. taking out all the British spellings and making them American spellings. And uh, sorry to the British because people out there, no one way. had told me not to do that, right? And that was what we did. Right. Um, and then at some point, the uh, I had gone down to the pre-press area, and remember, this was at a time when everything was, you know, uh, typesetting machines spit out sheets of of copy and they were pasted down by hand mm. and i went and we were in third galleys that had already been proofread a couple of times and i went down to prepress and there was don turnbull making corrections on final pasted up galleys he was going through and basically putting all those u's back into no. all oh. these words yes and because um, that's it, exactly the moment you want to make extensive <laughs> changes to well, the exactly. but none of the it other was, books were had the British, British spelling. spelling, so just I mean for consistency. Right, right. So well, so I, uh, I said some things, <laughs> and Don what did you say? I want some to, uh, well, I, you, I, yeah. you are a bleep, 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 you bleep, bleep, user. You, bleep, 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 bleep. I uh, yeah, I told Don he could not be making changes like that at that stage of production, and mm -hmm. he you know uh, brought in. Some other people's names and you know, the, all of his high-powered friends. Oh, dear. And, the Queen uh, was mentioned. <laughs> the yeah. Queen, I know. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. I know the Royals. Was, this was before the time of the Queen. This was oh. when the King was still in charge of everything. Oh my goodness! And, oh my God. Uh, Wait, what? No, the Queen of England? No, I think we're, he's talking about oh. a different King and Queen. Oh, right, oh, no, I, I the was King thinking, and Queen of TSR. Oh. Rather than the I know king who those people are. No, right, yeah. Others will have to yeah, look. I've seen the crown. I think she was in power then. I immediately went to Tiamat, but no, but not long. All Not hail. Hail. The, the long story it. short, Don got his way because Don knew the king. Ah. And, uh, oh, but Don didn't get his way because in the new edition, I took them all <laughs> out. <laughs> and you're back in the credits. Yes. And, and you're in the credits. But the, the, the coda to the story was uh, my good friend Steve Sullivan, who worked in the art department, made – he drew a little pair of pixie wings on uh, parchment, like translucent parchment, and he come up and he, he – he, uh, pinned them to the wall uh, in my office over my desk with a little sign that said pixie wings to be used when dusting British manuscripts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. That is some fantasy a, shade. Right? Yeah, <laughs> fantasy tea. Yeah, so that, that, those, those hung on my wall for years. That's fantasy tea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and British, too. Yeah, that, that sounds like a flip table. I mean, that's, yeah. that's pretty close. Taking out oh. somebody's name in the credits is the equivalent of a flip table. Yeah, and calling someone a prostitution who was. I was not pleased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, again, 
we, there's finally justice in the world because your name is yeah. right over this. Restored. Restored. Yeah. Rightful place. So how long had you been at TSR when this project uh, uh, was going on? A few months, I think. Oh, wow. So this wow. was kind of like your the first. new guy. Yeah. Big, big it wasn't deal. my first project, but it was one of the first. So how did you get involved with uh, with TSR? And, and were you a, uh, a player before that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd been playing D&D for quite a few years. And I was working on a newspaper in uh, Peoria, Illinois. Peoria. Uh, yeah. And I went into the hobby shop and picked up a copy of Dragon Magazine, and there was an ad that said TSR was looking for editors. And I said, that sounds hey. like a lot of fun. <laughs> and so it's a really pretty mundane story. I saw a help wanted ad, and I answered it, and I got the job. Do so they funny. give you lots of tests, editing tests? Uh, Blood tests? Yeah, yeah. I had to, in fact, they, <laughs> so they sent me home with a, an editing test, and it wasn't that long, and I completely chopped it apart um, I just I edited the crap out of that thing, and I sent it back, and my note was, I did the best I could. If I was the editor on this project, my advice would be send this back to the author for a complete rewrite. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and then when they hired me, the first thing they did was give me that manuscript to edit. And, oh, you know, it wasn't even a test. It no, was like, it wasn't. No, we just, we're like, just going to interview a bunch <laughs> of editors. <laughs> we got too much to get this uh, manuscript uh, right. done. Uh, no, that became that became uh, the secret of Bone Hill. So. Wow, oh that's pretty cool. So you didn't send it back for a rewrite. I did not get to send it back to the author for a rewrite. They told me just fix it. Just make it. Do you remember when you were my editor for a spell? Do you remember mm-hmm. you edited the, the confessions column? Yeah, yeah, you columns? did your yeah your columns. Did you ever want to tell me to just rewrite? No, the no, <laughs> Shelley. Those were I. That was the easiest work I ever had. Wow. Because he didn't actually read them. Is is is, <laughs> is the hundred dollar bill getting <laughs> slid over on the table? <laughs> he reread your columns multiple times just to trip lightly over the prose. That's once right. More. That's right. When right. I was struggling with something else, I would oh, pull I'm gonna up read this one fluff. of those confessions uh, columns. Let's listen to her talk read about that. her dog. <laughs> <laughs> Devil dog <laughs> story. Yeah. <laughs> Devil dog. So, uh, uh, so uh, talk a little bit about your um, uh, playing because I know that's always kind of re- fascinating to me. What it was like to, to before you even were working on it. Uh, Getting some of those older manuscripts and then figuring out how to play. What, what was that like? In uh, were you in Peoria, Illinois, when that was going on? Uh, I got uh, no, I, but I was introduced. I discovered D and D when I was at going to college in uh, Ames, Iowa. Okay, uh, uh, hot I was, of early yeah, RPGs. Yes, Iowa State University, <laughs> and I was. Uh, Again, I was working on the school paper, and I was proofreading classified ads. And one of the ads was for the Iowa State Gamers, and it said, you know, we. You know, we get together on Saturday afternoons. We play all these games. And I was a war gamer at that time. I had oh. never even heard of role-playing games. But I thought, well, I can go find, you know, people to play war games with. And then I showed up. And, of course, no one was playing war games. Everyone was sitting around playing this thing called D&D that I had never heard of. So, Nice. Uh, what was, was your first my, character? Do you remember? Uh, my, the first thing I ever played was not D&D. It was Gamma World. Oh, cool. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I do remember that character very well. I played a six-armed mutant. <laughs> Had. Sounds about right. Yep. That sounds yeah. like Gamma World. Yeah, exactly. First thing he ever found was a big chest full of lightsabers, and then the second thing he <laughs> found was an ancient war bot that blew him to pieces. Oh. <laughs> so nice. He, uh, yeah, he lived about a, uh, about 30 minutes. So I feel like that. <laughs> 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 but there's like there's like General Grievous uh, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, threads yeah, in exactly, there, in that character exactly. there. Yep. Man, they're hardcore names, Iowa. <laughs> 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 they kill you right out. Killed a new yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Quick. Nice. Come back. So how did you two meet? How did you meet Steve? At TSR, I believe. I was working on the magazines, and Steve was working in the uh, in the design department. I forget what your title was at that time. You were when was that? Eighty something? No, I didn't get there till ninety one. In ninety one, that was the year I spent sequestered in a room with Jim Ward working on special projects. Oh. What special uh, what project? Were the special projects? Um, you well, can, you we can spoil it now. It, it? Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. At this point, it's yeah. probably we not NDA any longer. No, no. But we were supposed to just generate ideas, and uh. I thought we came up with some brilliant ideas. And the only one that ever made it into production was, of course, the one that the executives brought to us and said, "Do this." <laughs> And that was Spellfire. Sounds so. like just an excuse to keep you guys yeah, right. locked we were, in a room. Right. <laughs> <These guys, laughs> they weren't going to use any of them. People will get angry if we fire them, but we we don't want them touching anything anymore. So. <laughs> or any of those ideas, like, do you remember them? Anything that would hold up today? 
bring it back. <laughs> Dust it Shelly, off. Shelly wants to sequester wings. you in another room, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I, what were some of them? Um, it seems like there was a, there were some dice games in there. Jim had a great idea for a game that would be played using baseball cards. Wow. Right? So oh. you didn't. We didn't have to produce any cards. Whatever baseball cards you had, you, you could play this rules. cool little baseball game. I did um, that when I was a kid. I kind of made like a little little game. I think I even used polyhedral dice for it because I was like, oh, yeah, you know, single, mm-hmm. double, strikeout, but whatever the dice rolled. And, I would, and then I would move them around the bases based on that. It was some, something similar? Yeah, yeah, very much like that. Huh. Um, and, of course, the idea was... around the same time, I think, too. <laughs> 91. Yeah. I think they, they might have stolen your they idea. Stole, yeah. Wait, did That's we right. have a mind connection <laughs> that I didn't know about? Am I Steve mm, Winter? We, yeah, I, we got this memo about, you know, keep an eye on this Greg Tito. <laughs> yeah. We think there's Tap some real phones. genius here, and we want to. We don't want to pay for it, but we want to tap into <laughs> nice. it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except, unfortunately, we never published the game. So. <laughs> the idea was to license it to somebody like Topps or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right, which makes total sense. Because, I mean, baseball cards was like the hugest thing in the yeah. world back then. Yeah. I remember oh, everyone yeah. being like, keep all of your baseball cards. They're going to be worth something. And then You'll who retire knew? retire on those. Yeah, right? It was like comic books, too. Like, that, was, that was the big story. But who knew that it was going to be magic cards would be the actual thing <laughs> that would be worthwhile 20 years later. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so what, so you came in around ninety one, yeah. and then and you know, would you guys ever work together or I don't know? Did we work on Al Kadim or one of the? Well, I was the product manager on yeah. Al Kadim, so, um, so yeah, we had overlap. There. I was writing stuff for your group. I was yep. freelancing my Al Kadim because I was doing periodicals during the day, and then mm-hmm. writing uh, Assassin Mountain and those sorts of things at night. Yeah, yeah, man, what was that Hard like? Working, yeah. And this was at the office in in Lake, in Lake Geneva, Geneva right, yeah. right? Which we just were all at, you, right? Mm-hmm. You were there too, weren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, fantastic. Don't want to miss Gary Con. No, right? It is that reunion thing. It really yeah. is. Yeah, it what's was good it, to be back for what's sure. What's it like going back? To, is it to feel? Does it fill you with good memories? <laughs> is it like a <laughs> high school reunion where you realize, oh, well, I didn't like you then, and I don't like you now? Table flip. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going with this. <laughs> fight, right, fight. We're going to get a table flip in here before this is over. <laughs> one way or another. I think, so. yeah. I think that's, the, that's like the five-timers yeah. club. Oh, all flip. right. <laughs> well, if I get a free pass on the table flip. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll do a food fight. It'll be great. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to go back and see everybody, but it's also really weird. Like, I don't recognize parts of Lake Geneva anymore because mm. yeah. um, there's like Walmart and things that weren't there at the time. I, I get lost a little. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the, you know, the, the location where the convention is, the, the Grand Geneva, yeah. um, used to be way outside of town. And now, now it's like oh, the, interesting. the town comes right up to the edge of yeah. the Grand Geneva. So I, that like was, I, did, I thought I was in the wrong place when I first got there. This year. <laughs> uh, is the actual office is still there, right? It's still a building. It's still there. It's still a building. I, I, I drove past it. Though, is it where it? The, the chocolate... The, or the candy shop is now on the bottom floor. I saw. Oh no, that's the even older. That's, okay. Yeah, that's the old, that's the old the Hotel Claire downtown. Okay. That's where the Dungeon yeah. Hobby Shop was. And yeah, like yeah, Dragon yeah. Magazine right. for a while, um, before my time. Uh, I'm thinking of the Sheridan Springs Road thing, which is like a, a warehouse and a one-story, two-story office building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I th- but I think that may be. The last time I looked at it, it was empty, and I think it might still be or at least part of it was empty well i admit i cruised past it and there were people parked in front of it so oh I so don't know. well good maybe they maybe uh, they found some rented it out in. but yeah all the stuff we remember is you know long gone oh, from yeah. there so yeah um i'm waiting for the day they put up a gygax memorial statue or a little more of that but i understand that that's fraught <laughs> so yeah. there's some things yeah yeah uh we'll, we'll flip some tables about that later mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well, I mean, it's awesome to have you guys, uh, you know, here. What was about uh, going back to the the Ghost of Saltmarsh stuff and re, you know revitalizing the U series, bringing it up to fifth edition? How, you know, talk a little bit about that process and and how it worked. Sure. Uh, I can talk about the early days of that process. Originally, it was well, we want to do Saltmarsh and some other stuff. And having worked on Dungeon Magazine, I said, well, how about we cherry pick from you know the archives of Dungeon Magazine mm-hmm. um, and pick that was the, your idea. No, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Mr. Merle's. Because okay. um, one of his adventures is in there. Yeah. What a coincidence. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a good adventure and it was short. So, yeah. like, Mike, do you, you know. You want to just do it? You know, just yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, 
there's a lot of great stuff in Dungeon. And it was the thing I worked on first. So, like, yeah, let's pick a few of those, like Isle of the Abbey or Tamaro's Fates or the Styes. Um, at least two of those, I think, you worked on converting to 5e. Uh, I'm not sure the, which ones you did. I did the Styes and what was the other one? Oh, was it, the, was it Mike's piece? Yeah. Yeah, Salvage Op. Salvage Op. Yeah. Um, so we said because – because Salt Marsh is a nice series, but it would be nice to have. I mean, if you go back to those original modules, they're like 24 pages. Mm. Right? They're tiny. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, we'd like to do a big hardcover. Um, I'm like, well, we, there are, things have been published since the 70s, right? And some of them are really <laughs> good. Yeah. So we basically went to the vault and did kind of a yawning portal kind of thing. We said, let's just take the very best and bring it up to speed. Uh, and some of it's from second edition, some of it's from third edition, different writers, uh, Greg Vaughn, Richard Pett. Um, and and so that was the original thought. And then it was, well, what do we do about Salt Marsh, right? And the town. The town, which doesn't get much description in the original. So it's like, okay, we're going to need to write a, a larger version of the town. And I said, Thanks, I'll take that chunk. Um, <laughs> yeah, we world a, building, I can yeah, do this. I could do that. And uh, the map, there's a third edition, 3.5 version of the Salt Marsh map. That was weird. That was stripping paint off. Mm. That's the town of Salt Marsh after it grows up and has, like, industry. It's not a little ratty seaside smuggler village anymore. What, what was that done for? Uh, DMG2 or something. Mm. Some... Not totally salt marsh centric product had this. Here's a chunk of of world building in it, right? Like how to build a city here. We're calling it salt marsh, but it had stuff in it that was like doesn't belong in the U series, like an orphanage and an opera house and things like this. Opera house? You don't think of a smuggler's <laughs> no. town having like, no. Yeah, house. that's hey, clearly a front. Smugglers can have yeah. culture. They can have culture. They <laughs> I mean, have all the money in the world. They can. Sponsor sure, their favorite. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I could see a theater or or anything, yeah. but like an opera house seems really specifically a large yeah. production. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, the performers were all kidnapped. Oh, <laughs> oh, forced. And, and there was illusions. Yep. <laughs> That's what I've always wanted to do. It was a workhouse program for urchins. <laughs> 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 no, I mean it was it was fine, and it sort of felt like Salt Marsh a hundred years later. Mm-hmm. But um, but I took all that stuff out and made the map which I guess I shouldn't show because it's radio. Um, uh, but it's great. <laughs> I made it very simple and, and said, you know, here's, here's what we... We did it as a, as a giveaway at, uh, at GaryCon. Oh, fantastic. There was, fantastic. A, there was a, uh, a small little uh, mouse pad that had the map. From the map of Salt Marsh from this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, some of it was world building uh, to bring it up to speed. Some of it was taking all the U's out. Um, and, uh, you and should have given that to That somebody. took a long time. I know. Well, Copying, I mean, with... <laughs> Find and replace. I know. It just yeah. takes ages. It's the no use series. That's right. The no I had to series. do that by hand. <laughs> yeah. That's why I had to get put back in by hand. <laughs> Earn the old school cred and, you know, <laughs> us modern kids just copy pasta, search and replace. Um, but, no, the really tricky part about revisiting the U series was how much do you change? Yeah. Um, and I don't want to say that it was a Don Turnbull level argument, but there were discussions about, you know, can we uh, revisit this? Can we add whole new sections? Can we, um, you know, can we drop this character? Um, and in most cases, I think we were pretty conservative. We mm. said, let's not change too much. Um, is, that, is that why? Is that the reasoning why you don't make those changes? Because you don't want to take it too far away from the original? Well, this or? is why it was an argument. Like, the Wizards team was, don't change too much. Keep it true to the original spirit. Okay. And I don't know. I think you and I were on the same page about this. I know John Sawatsky was like, I want to change a few things, right? And like make it better and restructure it and change the prose. I'm like, oh, how far? It's a fine line. It's hard. Right. Especially mm-hmm. when it's written in a very British English and it's uh, I mean, people who played this to pieces years ago have very fond memories and they want all the same NPCs to be in there. Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard from a surprising number of people who say that. You know, those old U modules were their favorite modules of all the early D&D stuff. Because of all that so, flavor that was in there? Oh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, the third of them is kind of a grind and a crawl, but that's fun. Yeah. 
right? Like the early ones, they're smugglers. There's stuff going on. I don't know. Um, yeah. The last one is pretty combat intense. So, so what was it about um, these adventures that was like the core tenet? Like, what was the thing that you're like, okay, we could we could change this, but like, what what was what was the core of it that you couldn't, you know, that everybody was agreed couldn't be changed? Can't change the maps. Uh, the dungeon maps mm -hmm. stayed the same. Yeah, but more uh, thematically, like what what, what were those? Thematically, I mean, it was a pretty straight like keep the pros the same unless there's a good good reason to start monkeying with it. So mm. we added things, but we didn't take much away. Oh, all right, that, that makes was sense. kind of the approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you don't notice where we added stuff. That's great. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember that from 1970. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so. Well, and, and a lot of the adding, I, I don't know whether it's true in the adventures you were working on. Um, for me, a lot of the adding was, uh, especially when you're going back to, uh, you know, a, adventures that were written for a certain Certain for a, a certain philosophy of D and D, yep. and fifth edition has its own philosophy in terms of how much detail you go into for the DM when you're setting up an encounter, and and so a lot of it was kind of, you know, bringing things up to that fifth edition philosophy and saying, all right, you know, we in the old days it was okay to leave all that up to the DM, right, to do however he or she wanted, but mm -hmm. you know nowadays we try to be a little more a little more uh, specific on a lot of these things. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, there are, it's old enough that there are encounters that are pretty much uh, a room description and some hit points, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, there were some that were very bare bones. Because um, they're skeletons? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. The skeletons yeah. were oddly fleshed out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. Weird. <laughs> funny, funny. Very flashy, uh, but yeah, there, I mean, you know, it's called Ghost of Salmar, so I think a lot of people are assuming there is there is some some undead in there, and then the Sahuagin mm -hmm. feature pretty prominently uh, on the covers and the artworks oh, mm -hmm. that we're putting out there. So that's something really I, exciting I, for people to to it, look into. It's heavy on nautical, but I mean, there's also mucking about in the swamps. Oh, no one likes swamps. No mm -hmm. one likes the swamps. That's always dangerous. Um, and then there's these related adventures, some of which are island adventures or... That uh, sounds nice. Yeah, which, you know, easy to sail to. And I want to go on an island adventure. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> peninsula adventure. Uh, same. Peninsula adventure. <laughs> oh, well. That's in Florida. The potions all uh, come with a little umbrella. Yes. Oh, oh nice. man, I want those potions. Yeah. Sip, 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 sip. <laughs> we need umbrellas. We need umbrellas for our coffees yeah. from now on. Uh, so that's very cool. And then the one thing we didn't carry over, I guess I'm going to spoil this. Like, we did, there are monsters in the original U series. Spoiler. That, yeah, spoiler. There's monsters? Yes. Oh. No, that's not the spoiler. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Go on. Um, <laughs> we, we thought about doing some monsters that are specific to swamps in Greyhawk and so on. But, um, but the monster converted stats are pretty much things that appear in the adventures and NPCs that appear, not any of the sort of secondary stuff. Which doesn't some of which was random encounters in the swamp, and we didn't do those because mm. so. it was just been you know too well, much page like, count that type of thing. Yeah, it's like well, oh yeah, that was right. good. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm still just no worries. Uh, so beautiful, Steve. To see I, this I book. think Steve, you worked on. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. With the the appendix, uh, ships oh, in the yes. sea. Was that was that you or was uh, it? well not in this book the original of the ships in the, or of ships in the sea that TSR published in yeah. the late nineties I was the the uh, product manager on that. oh no way okay I didn't realize that there were that that was a product honestly mm -hmm. uh, that was that was a, a gray area <laughs> for for our black hole for my my D and D fandom See, was Steve in that period spent six months doing nautical reenactments with Jim Ward in the locker room, <laughs> 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 the room. that's locker right room. that's right we flooded the whole room yeah, everyone underneath had, you was complaining yeah. they're like ah. There's so much water coming in through the ceiling. <laughs> um, but, yeah, what was that like? So, and, and, and I didn't realize the echo of the appendix name in here is from that product. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was uh, 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 Skip Williams, I think, was the main author on the original book. And, but it was you know, uh, everything you could ever want to know about putting ships in your D&D campaign. Um, it, was, it was one of the – they were called the Leatherette books. Yeah. Remember? This was one of the blue-covered – Leather up oh, books for DMs. Okay. Right. 
the, the, it was one of the last ones we did, as I recall, before uh, everything moved out here. It was like the complete handbook to elves and, and mm-hmm. those. The yeah, back, exactly. Yeah, those, those kind of yep. splat books. Yeah. And, I mean, Ghost of Salt Marsh, yes, there are many fine adventures in it, but that section in the back of monsters and ships and ocean rules is super useful for anybody who's yeah. running anything vaguely nautical, right? Um, yeah, that's what I keep going back to as, as one of the coolest selling points of this book is that, like, oh, man, like, you could use this anywhere. And people, you know, pirates have been popular in mm-hmm. recent years uh, mm-hmm. and that whole type of, uh, of, of deal. Uh, so having uh, the ability to, to run a campaign in that, uh, in that vein. Uh, yeah, well, the Isle of the Abbey adventure in here has some pirates. So, mm. I mean, mm-hmm. we're even... Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're touching that, that topic, that theme, and of course you want to do pirates well and with a, a well-tested set of rules. I know this went through the usual process of Unearthed Arcana, massive feedback from fans. For sure. Um, yeah, right, that, was, rules. that appendix was up, I think, in December uh, yeah. of, of 2018 to, for people to get feedback on. Yeah, um, I, I haven't had a chance to look through this appendix. At all. I know, it's all changed. All of your work has changed, I'm sorry. I, the, the use are back, the <laughs> use are back. <laughs> <laughs> they put all the use back in. <laughs> no, table flip. <laughs> My <laughs> legacy destroyed. Is How, this stuff all new, <laughs> the boats? Uh, looks new. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, have either of you run uh, seafaring campaigns that was all about going from island to island? Spelljammer count? Yeah, it totally does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I played in a Spelljammer campaign in, in grad school. I had a blast. I, I didn't mean to. I went in. It was an accident. It was an accident. <laughs> I'm like, oh, spacefaring pirates. Am I really going to enjoy this? Whatever. I trust the, the game master. It's going to be fine. And we had a blast. We hopped from planet to planet. We looted everything. Eventually, we got gunpowder and things went, you know. Stop. Even crazier. Yes. <laughs> it was good times because, you know, the ship is your world. Your crew is your companions. It's it's a party on uh, on Oak. And we we ran out of room eventually, price on our heads. And, uh, yeah, we ended with a, a flash of glory. Nice. Yeah. As in the boat exploded? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> 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 That's the only way to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Steve? Have you ever uh, played or ran in a in a campaign that you know could be used in a book like uh, this? Not D and D specifically. Uh, I was in a uh, in the there's a game called Savage Worlds that has a setting called mm. Fifty Fathoms. Nice. And I I played in a Fifty Fathoms campaign that went for I don't know two or three years. I oh think. wow! So um, yeah, uh, other but in D and D, just small adventures. You know, I mean, everybody's gets on a boat at some point, right? Fights off the sea monster. What do you think? What do you think makes it uh, compelling to? Ha- I mean, you know, obviously the what you were just talking about uh, having the party on a boat and going from place to place. But like, you know, what what should a dun- dungeon master think about when they're thinking about running a campaign like this? <laughs> it in a in a nautical campaign. Anytime you give the players something like a ship, mm-hmm. you're handing them a huge amount of freedom, mm, and yes. the first thing they're going to do is sail that ship to some portion of the campaign map that you have never even thought about, mm-hmm. let alone planned. Right? So that's the main thing. You know, w- once, you, once you turn the, the players loose on that, they are going to find ways to make your life miserable. <laughs> 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 that's <laughs> you know? interesting because I might think that something set on a ship would actually make it harder or have less, less flexibility because you're, on, you're contained on a ship. But right. what you're saying is that it's just... The boundaries are limitless. as long as they're allowed to steer. You have this problem, but <laughs> right, it's yeah. not on rails. It's the opposite of on it's rails. Yeah, it's exactly. on rails. Exactly. Except there are ways around it, right? Like the salvage operation adventure in here yeah, can I take place one. anywhere, mm-hmm. right? You, as long as you're on a ship, you can have that adventure. Yeah, um, and it's a bit of a Deus ex machina, but hey, there's a storm. Right, you don't wind up where you think you're going to wind That's up. That's right. You can always do the Gilligan's yeah. Island. Do yeah. the Gilligan's Island. Blow them off course. Then all of a sudden they need to meet the professor and Marianne and build a raft. Right. Yeah. And I think what's interesting about this book in particular is that it it can. Ins- I mean, obviously you can use those adventures, and you g- the the final product has a way to, you know, take it as a campaign from level one to level twelve yep. if you so choose. But each one of these adventures can be placed in any campaign and in answer to something that you're talking about like if you know oh you're going in the way i didn't have anything planned for 
you find a boat that's listless and at sea <laughs> and it's, you know, okay, what's at the bottom of that boat? Or, mm-hmm. or you know, some of the island adventures that are in here that you can just plop yes. in sure. as not necessarily filler content, but just like, okay, I didn't plan for this, but I can use anything from this book uh, in, in the ocean. Right. I mean, like the, the adventure, uh, Mike Merles' adventure salvage operation yeah. is the way the adventure is set up, characters are going on purpose out to find this floating hulk uh, and find, you know, uh, get, grab something off of it. Right. Um, but there's no reason why if you have characters traveling around on a on a ship, uh, you, you can't, can't just encounter that. Yeah, they can't just find that thing. And no group of self-respecting D&D players <laughs> is going to see a wrecked ship floating on the ocean and well, not go... We should go, leave it alone. Yeah, ooh, we that might... call the Coast that, That's private property. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the maritime Said law no about D&D this? Uh, player ever. <laughs> pretty much yeah. every dungeon is about trespassing, right? It is pretty much. Yeah, you're not supposed to be there. Um, and, and I mean, and I when I ran Salva's operation at at GaryCon, and I placed it uh, at Port Nianzaru in Chultz. Oh, uh, it was like it was, the, was the leaping off point. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this is great. Oh. It's so easy. Nice. You can you can put it into uh, any campaign. Yeah, very simply. Uh, but there's other adventures in there that you can do that too with as well. Oh yeah. Um, the styes is pretty much any town with a CD side. Um, yeah, which is every town. Yeah, they really the characters don't actually. The only boat they get on on that particular adventure, I think, is hanging from a crane. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a port town, but it's not the most right, nautical. It's a, of right, the it's adventures. a port town, but the adventure itself doesn't take place on a ship. Right. Uh, it has a lot of it. It wouldn't work if it wasn't on the coast. But uh, cool, cool. Yeah, I uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think something with 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 nautical themes is one it's overdue. Of, yeah, it's one area in that yeah. fifth edition mm-hmm. hasn't really uh, covered a lot. I know people are excited for it. Oh man, the art and the art is always going to be behind fantastic. every good piece of art is a good art order. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I mean, oh man, look at this thing. Look at those art orders. Yeah, just man. Ah, just this right. is some good the radio, radio right here. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's the oh best. My God. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, at, at the risk of talking too much about Salt Marsh, although we no, totally could, I think you've got some other fun yeah, stuff you that, you, that you brought stuff, to show. Yeah. I did. And again, this is going to be perfect for radio. The first thing I want to tell you about is something from the Dots RPG project. They do books in Braille. Love it. I don't, I think you had just Dempsey on your show at one point? We maybe? have not, but I think we're, we're working on it. Oh, well, you should, because I have brought with me the Tome of Beasts, Volume 1 in Braille. That is amazing. Which, this is how they do it. It's sort of a spiral-bound book. I've never book. actually seen it, yeah. Or, and or, or felt it, rather. Bound. <laughs> the original book, of course, oh. is 400 pages, New Monsters, right? But... Oh, insane. I know. I love it. They, they do them alphabetically basically like here is letter a and it's one volume because braille isn't as space efficient mm-hmm. but yeah it so just this is blew my this mind is not the entire tome of beast it's not the entire tome of beast that basically would look like a set of encyclopedias it would be 26 oh volumes wow but they're working on it right like they gave me letter a to bring here this is letter a this is letter just a letter a yes okay it's a huge Spiral bound. It book. is a huge spiral bound For those book. Are, Two-sided watch, can't braille. I, I didn't know. You can whether... watch the live stream. Yeah. Archives. And how do they do like typography? Like how do you do like headings? I mean, because I, I would assume with with monster descriptions, like it's all about how it looks on the page, right? So right. how do you do that in in braille? I don't know. I'm asking the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get Jess on this show. Yeah, really. I do. I do. We should also. Have, I I spoke with a, an amazing. Um, that is amazing. Dungeons and Dragons player by the name of Blind Temple. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, when I played a character that was blind uh, on, a, on a live stream last fall, and uh, and uh, he was very instructive about like, oh no, this these are the type of things that you know blind people would do and things like that. So I'd love to 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 pick his brain a little bit more too about you know what what kind of resources would make more sense. Right. Yeah. Um, well, this is one resource I didn't even realize that there were groups dedicated to turning cool. gaming materials into braille materials. Yeah. Um, but they offer them, as I understand it, pretty much. Um, for free to local game shops, right? Like if you have a player who might benefit from this, they will get you a copy of the set of books. Um, Good stuff. And good on you guys for, for, you know. Well, they did all the work. We just got, we we gave them permission and said, how is this going to work exactly? Right. (laughs) Right? Like how does the art translate at all? Or do people turn that into descriptions? Oh, is your art order? Do they they just get your art orders? Oh, yeah. They, They do sort of take, 
a sighted person takes the art and then turns it into text, right? So oh. it's kind of it's a skeleton and it's got a like the alt text in, uh, on web pages. Yeah, it's exactly like alt text so that, you know, um, you get a sense of what does it look like? Well, it's like a centipede, but with a human head. Uh, and oh. and uh, their descriptions it's are like really good. Centipede. And it, it goes back the other way. For us, it was really interesting because they're like, well, if you want the, uh, the descriptions that we're going to write up, you can use them as alt text. We'll just hand you those. I'm like, our alt text is terrible. We'd love to have <laughs> yes, your descriptions. Bring it on. So we're going to do that and roll that into our Tome of Beasts uh, PDF so that everybody um, has that, whether they're using screen readers or, w- or whatever they're going to use. So, so how we, long did it, you might have said this, how long did it take to do that? To do the first yeah. volume? Yeah. Uh, they knocked the first one out. I think they have a team of three in about a week. So letter A is oh, really? a week. And that 26 more letters is 26 more weeks. Okay. Uh, yeah. They they can go very quickly. Um, but then printing it is a whole other matter. I, yeah. I don't know how you print Braille either. So anyway, reasons to have Jess on the show. Yes. Yeah, we got Absolutely. a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, that's not all we've been up to, of course. You got other things. No. That, that was other people that's doing not cool all. work. Uh, yeah, back in February, we published an adventure. Uh, Courts of the Shadow Fae for 5th edition and I'm one of the authors and Dan Dillon who I understand is a Wizard of he the is Coast. He's an official wizard. He is my Not co-author. Not of the coast quite yet but no, he Dan is of the Midwest. Of the yeah, middle. he's a wizard of the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he's moving out here, right? Yeah. That's true. So yeah. he will be. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, I brought one just to show. It's uh, it's Court. intrigue. Cool, in yeah. Courts of the Shadow Realm, Shadow Fae. I know who might want to look at that. Thank you. It's levels Ooh, eight I, I like her twi- necklace. Yeah, isn't she great? Mm-hmm. Can you get that necklace? I want that necklace. Uh-huh. It's cool. one of those adventures where, like, you wrap up, say, I don't know, a water deep adventure, and you're level eight, and then what? Well, could play Courts of the Shadow Fit next. Well, what's the, uh, what's the plot? What's the, the premise the is there's a town. Well, it's set in Zobek, so it but any large town will do. Mm-hmm. Uh, a representative of the Shadow Fae shows up and says, nice town you got here, nice thing. <laughs> um, we own it, and we have the paperwork to prove it. And they start monkeying with it, and they start assuming that they are in charge of town. And you need to go clear this up with them, ah. which means you need to go to the <laughs> Shadowfell and um, have words with the authorities who have made this horrible mistake. I see. So that's the basic plot. Um, and then you get into the court intrigue. And the court intrigue, yeah. Well, at first, they're not even sure that you're worth their time. The Shadow Fae, my favorite part about them is they are gigantic, enormous snobs. They're like elves <laughs> turned up to about 12, right? <laughs> no matter what you say or who you are, 13, I think what dragons right. you have slain, they're like, yeah, but you're not one of us, right? Yeah. So it still kind of sucks to be you. And they, they look down at everyone and... Um, my experience is that high-level D and D players uh, take to this. <laughs> they do not react well. They do to not that. react well. They hate these guys. They don't like le- being looked down upon. At no, all. and I'm like, well, I'm enjoying myself being snooty elfy McElf. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that character stated up in there? Oh yeah, <laughs> snooty elfy uh, McElf. Elfy McElf. I believe his name. Oh, the McElf realm <laughs> 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 of the Midwestern McElfs. <laughs> um, and so that really bear folk. They are. Oh yeah, there are bear folk in there as well. Right. That's that's a reason to get into this. So basically, that's enough motivation for most high level characters. Is like we are going to show them. We're going to the shadow plane and we're going to kick some butt until they respect our authority. Right. Yeah. Um, I was going to say I, I cannot count the number of adventures where I have included a scene that basically says everything here will go smoothly until. as long as the characters are respectful. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> the assumption here is the characters will not be respectful. You know as soon as you type that. that <laughs> yeah. The assumption is they are going to lose their shit. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because the Shadow Elves, this is the most irritating thing about them, is not only are they snooty and superior, but they kind of have the chops to back it up. Oh. Right. They like, have the power, especially have, in their realm. They have tricks like they're used to dealing with humans so like you break out the barbarian and the fireballs and they're like ready for you uh, which only makes it worse i like how you guys <laughs> split up um just as i'm flipping through here like act one scene one yeah like, it makes it a very shakespearean feeling it's really divided into three buckets like there's the one in the city then there's your first section in the shadow realm and then there's the second run of the shadow realm which 
There's a twist I'm not going to spoil. Oh, you almost did. You almost I did. I wanted yeah. to spoil <laughs> it, but like, I'm oh, not so going oh to. I love this. I'm going to show it, even though it is not great radio. But the, the bear folk uh, art here, I just I can't stop looking at it. It looks really cool. I want to be a bear folk. Can I be a bear folk? You can. Yes. There I are want. stats for bear folk yes. PC. That be a bear cool. folk. All right, I'm in. I'm I want to be an owl bear folk. An owl bear folk. Is that in here too? Uh, no, but we really seem to have missed a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe a supplement. So nice. we actually sold out of the first print run. It's awesome. available in PDF. It will be on Roll20. Mm. It will be on Fantasy Grounds. And we're doing a second print run. I was just nice. going to say, you're reprinting it. And right? I'm getting Dan Dillon to like sign copies, man. As you should. Yeah. Signed, autographed, fanciness. So just random question. Mm -hmm. When you are coming up with a new adventure, mm -hmm. and this one is for level 7 through 10? Uh, 8 through 12. Somewhere 8 through 12. There. Okay. I, I don't know if that's seven what it says ten? on the back. Does it book. say 7 you through 10? Oh, you know why? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Typo! No. It does say 7 through 10. <laughs> yeah, because the uh, there was an earlier edition of this adventure. Okay. It was for <laughs> This <laughs> might <laughs> answer my question or yes. be part of. Um, but how do you, what comes first? Like you say, like, we want an adventure for around these levels. Or you write the adventure and you're like, well, we got to scale this back. This was written for 4th edition originally. Oh. And so some of the work getting it into 5th. Well, Dan did a lot of it, and um, and Kim Mohan, who edits a lot of Wizards of the Coast, yeah. book, did a chunk. Um, we didn't really have a set level range. We were like, we have this fourth edition adventure. We just want it to be a 5e adventure. What level does it translate out as? Okay. Because a bunch of the monsters in Courts of the Shadow Fae are in Tome of Beasts or are in the Creature Codex. So we'd already statted creatures. Yeah. And then we said, well, turns out it's more like 7 to 10 than 8 to 12. I was going to say, most of those shadow court things are a handful. Yes. So, so uh, that's what it's based on? You look at like what obstacles players are going to face off against, and they should be at this level to keep it balanced. Yeah, and we actually got quite clever with some of the encounter design because we said if characters, because there's not a totally linear sequence, we said if your characters are already a higher level, here's how you adjust the numbers of enemies oh, okay. and if your characters aren't quite there yet take out this one monster to oh, balance cool. it so there's some scaling that goes yep. on in the text mm -hmm. which okay a dungeon master could do that on the fly if you're experienced and you're like oh this is going to crush my group yeah but it's, it's nice to it's have it yeah, there they right. might not know that yeah especially for newer players yeah. or even if you're just like oh yeah i, I if just you're, a if, reminder. If you're a lazy DM, it's all right. Yes. There. It's already <laughs> There's taken no such care thing. Of. Yes. Being a DM, you're inherently already not lazy. You're overprepared. I'm the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll read this 15 minutes before we got to uh, start this. One session. of those improv DMs yeah. Yeah. that makes exactly. it look so yeah. easy. Uh, yes. yes. It, well, I don't make it look easy. I probably yeah. am screwing up all along, but it's, uh, you know, just the time, the bandwidth issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it is nice to have yeah, those guidelines really nice. in there so that, you yeah. know, uh, you don't necessarily kill your party in the first uh, don't encounter. Don't want to kill the party right off. You I mean, want to no. kill them slowly later. Yeah, second <laughs> encounter at least. <laughs> Get them attached. Yeah. It's more fun. Uh, and what's, what's the, is this a poster? This, this is a poster because I don't have the book yet. This book is coming out. All right, so it's called Tales of the Old Marguerite. Ooh. It was a Kickstarter There's an owlbear for you. An owlbear. There's your owlbear. Yay! This goes right to Shirley Thank because, you. come on. Um, yeah, owlbear oh, on the hi. cover. It's the Deep Cutie. Dark Forest. This I is cutie. All <laughs> so, of us are petting you. <laughs> and we're so happy about the way this adventure turned out. Um, it's all deep, dark woods. It's all owl bears. It's all elves. It's all druids and rangers. This is a good one. Um, and it's adventures from levels 1 to 12, including a little visit with Baba Yaga. Oh. I know. Baba. She's got co She's tea bad. and cookies for everyone. <laughs> um, are owl bears really this tall? Well, when they rear up. They're really? Yeah. All large. right. Well, Cobalt Press owl bears are bigger and meaner. Oh. <laughs> bigger and meaner. 150%. We're going to have to have some words and put U's in owl bear now. What? Yeah. Owl bear. <laughs> owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, is awesome. And that's out in May. And it is that is where you can find, indeed, some bear folk stats for new bear folk variants. Hey. Uh, variants, even like polar bear folk? No, this koala is a forest. Koala bear folk? <laughs> 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 I want to be a koala bear. Panda bear folk? <laughs> Teddy bear yeah. folk? You're not allowed to kill them. <laughs> That's creepy. Oh, and no. we've got uh, yeah. we've got a Margrave Player's Guide, too. That's where all the, those 
racial options are and the druids. Uh, Dennis Astaire. Oh, my God. Steve, do you remember Dennis? Sure. All right. Well, he wrote a bunch of druid variants, including the Circle of Oak for the Margrave Players Grad. He's the guy who invented the druid back like in 1970. Oh, right? wow. Wrote the original druid class. That's really? awesome. And, and we, Chariots of Sister. That's, that's him. That spell that's named for, oh. for Dennis. Dennis. Oh, Dennis yeah. is there. Okay. And so we, I don't know, I flipped out and fanboyed um, and said, gee, um, would you care to write some druid stuff for fifth edition? And he was like, yeah, well, no one's asked me. Uh, <laughs> like, he's like, well, I'm asking you now. I'm asking you now. He's, and he's, one of, he's one of those names that it, uh, people figure, oh, I, wait, he must be, he must have, he? his roster is so full. How yeah, could he possibly, and so no one asks him to do work. I know, but I guess he did Bunny Some Burrows, too. Well, yeah, that was, that was his right, one. he just did that for... Uh, uh, for I always loved the yeah. older Jew, uh, the Druid kind of write-ups because it was that one th- you couldn't ex- uh, get to the next level unless you found the Druid who is at that level and, and kill him <laughs> <laughs> or her. And I was like, that's the only way you could level up was if to take right. the one mantle so and get higher. I was like, was yes. that him? Did he come up with that uh, idea? Was that? The, I don't know that that was in the 1976 Druid. No, that, was I that feel like that was an advanced. AD&D? Yeah. Though, well, that was what was in the, the AD&D Druid. I don't recall if that was in, in the, the original. Because the original one was in, what, Dragon Magazine, I think? Yes, uh, the very first Druid was Yeah, uh, I don't know if that if they had that whole Hierophant structure in there at that point or not. Yeah, it was very evocative. Though. But I was just thrilled that he did a bunch of new spells and a new circle yeah. and <laughs> magic items. And I'm like, I remember oh, reading that in the player's handbook. And specifically, not playing a druid because, because it I was be like, by the time I get to, I never had a character make it to fourteenth level to begin <laughs> with. <laughs> right? Why I was concerned about that, I don't know. Yeah, I, was I, was I was the opposite. I was like, I want to play this character because it's like just getting to the next level was a quest unto itself, and I was like, that's that <laughs> seems fun. I don't know yeah. why my twelve year old self was like, that's perfect. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Never actually have done it, but uh, you know, maybe one day, maybe one day we will. As I'll be a, a bear folk and druid, yes, or wild shape into bear. It's close enough. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, right. We're all bears deep down. <laughs> what happens with the bear folk druid wild shapes? Hmm. Mm. I'm sure someone's thought into about a human. This. <laughs> I got to talk to Dan Dillon about this. <laughs> <laughs> Get him on the horn. We'll talk to Dan. <laughs> That awesome. My, the Bear Fork character I played in your short oh, yeah. campaign was a druid. Yes, he was. Oh, you were going to put this to the test, were but you? Yes, I was. I kept, <laughs> But I never got high enough level to actually be able to shape change into a bear from a bear folk. So. <laughs> got to get this <laughs> going again. <laughs> we got to really run this experiment. Like there's some bitterness. <laughs> See <Yeah>. what happens. <laughs> never yeah. was that high. Would never. Uh, yeah. and <laughs> you killed me before <laughs> I got that high. I know. <laughs> Well, as always, it's wonderful having you uh, visit the offices. Oh, sure. uh, come down more. I want to see all these, this fun stuff. Oh, yeah, sure. you always and have a play pile more of D&D goodies. with I you guys. I try to bring the stuff. Yeah, you bring it. <laughs> you bring, you <laughs> bring it out to everyone in the audience uh, and uh, to here in the office, too. It's a pleasure. So, you guys rock. Well done. There's some amazing stuff coming out in like high volume these days. I'm Real happy. The D and D team is so big. I don't know everybody anymore. I mean, you know Dan. That's good. I know Dan. Yeah. <laughs> He's my ringer now. He's yeah. like, Hey Dan, what's really going on over there? <laughs> Tell me what's happening <laughs> behind the <laughs> scenes. <laughs> Are there any U's being put in any places? <laughs> yeah. That I know about? <laughs> Tell me about the British invasion. I'm worried. <laughs> Oh, the British D and D is coming. We're going. We're getting into the UK and all around. So uh, oh, it'll be great. Man. Well, let's play some D and D. All right. Next let's. time you come, let's yes. Do it. I see you have the dice here. It's, we've got all the accoutrements uh, to make it happen. Ready. Uh, Steve, great to, to meet you and uh, uh, you too. You know, have you here. And yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to Ghosts of Saltmarsh and everybody checking it out on May 21st. It's available everywhere. It's uh, look for it there. Um, how can people find you, what's going on with Cobalt Press and you yourself? Oh, Skin? sure. Well, uh, Cobalt Press is at Cobalt Press on Twitter, and we're Facebook, whack Cobalt Press on Facebook. And. I think we're on Instagram now. Nice. And we've got a Twitch channel coming this summer. Cool. Ooh, exciting. I know. A very small Twitch channel. Well, it'll actually, it'll be quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, if you're doing any interview shows, you know, I mean, I think there's two we people. We should have you on just I to mean. see what happens. I mean, I know you want to talk <laughs> to <laughs> Ryan. And Pelham. Pelham and Ryan are available. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> In their spare hours, I know they're <laughs> looking for additional. Yeah. Um, so all of those places. And me personally, I'm at Monkey King on Twitter. Nice. And Steve, what about you? Where are uh, you at? I'm also at Monkey King. On <laughs> 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 well, the real Monkey My King. Please stand up. Get in touch with me. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, I'm uh, STV Winter 
uh, on Twitter, and I'm on Facebook as Stephen Winter. And and uh, at one point I had a blog, but I don't keep it up anymore. So it was a I good think blog. that the world is like that now. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone had one at one point, and nobody keeps up with it. Right. <laughs> difficult yeah i can barely do twitters at this point uh well again thank you guys and uh we will be taking a uh a short break while we get ready to record some uh lore you should know so thanks Ooh, a lot can we listen in of course yeah i don't even know what we're talking about chris uh, uh i threw a few topics at him he's like "Ooh, i have to research that i'm like okay we'll do something you don't have to research he can just <laughs> spout I off i love that he can just he's just He's a font of knowledge yep. for sure. Yep. Yes, as Excellent. are all of these uh, uh, fine gentlemen so and women who, who are working on the Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. It's true. All right. Well, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.